is um, a premier project for us in terms of its community engagement and the ways in which we can give back to community as well as help communities to, with their conservation and preservation of their language and stories. The Monash Country Lines Archive began really here at Borolula where we're sitting, where because I'd been here for, well this is now my 37th year, watching less and less speakers of language and trying to get ways of thinking that we could get young people and old people interacting about language, culture, law, country. John is a very talented linguist and he actually, as he says, he speaks several Aboriginal languages and can hear many others. We were able to actually take that, those gifts that he had and actually use them in, and help us work with other communities who might be just at the stage of rediscovering their language. So I had this idea that maybe animations may be one of those keys. We tried lots of other things as well, lots of print texts and atlas. So it was a, a growing journey of trying to find out what would be best in this community. We have an initial meeting where we get out to a community for the first time and that's kind of just like a meet and greet. They all get to know us, we kind of get to know them. Um, in those initial meetings, we'll discuss what we can do for them and what they want to do, what kind of stories they have. So far, we've, we're working with two communities in Victoria, one in South Australia, two in Northern Territory, and one in Western Australia. The Yanua, Garua, Mara and Gurangi peoples of Borolula, the four language groups, are very strong and very passionate about wanting to see the stories of all of the, this country, the stories of the dreaming, uh, the song lines, the gujiga, uh, those stories uh, kept so that young children continue to know those stories. Ideally we would love our elders to get together with our young people to work out the best stories that would fit this art form for saving our languages. Some of the stories, or well, most of the stories, are either oral stories or songs and therefore they're not visual stories so they need to be changed in order to fit a, a visual story. The animation for Jibby, when I first heard about it and saw the first draft of it, I just thought that was just so amazing and it's just exciting to see that the family story is actually being made into something that's bringing it to life. Mangala season has started to warm up and children must try and rest with their parents. Go on, go on, go on. Go on. And it's really the opportunity where the humanities, the, the, the stories, the narratives, the, the, you know, the, the magic of, of language actually comes alive. And it comes alive through something as, as high tech and, and 21st century as these remarkable animations. Some of the communities we're working with, their language hasn't been spoken for over 100 years. So it's not just taking a language that exists, it's actually bringing it back to life. The process of learning language is pretty hard. It's all new stuff, so it's uh, a really new experience for everyone, I guess. It's really making sure that everyone's involved every step of the way, so when the finished product is done, they still feel as though we still own it. What we've developed you would hope there's an opportunity and a learning tool that allows it to um, be expanded, you know, because the language retrieval and language reclamation is very important. With retrieval and reclamation, there's a lot of opportunities to build your language back up. I know how important it is to keep that language alive and to keep it recorded and stored somewhere for generations down the track. It's pretty important and very cool to be able to actually know some of this stuff because it's been gone for quite some time and hasn't been spoken to of or heard of for a long time. Because of what I've learned here, the saddest things that I can think of is a language disappearing. I think it helps for the kids to learn the language a bit more. Kids, they want to speak their language. I reckon it's really good, you know, to get their language back so they'll know what sometimes when we speak with the old people speak our language and some of these kids ask us what they ask us questions question, you know. It is important that the younger generations get involved in becoming involved with their culture and to work with the language and 
with a view to passing that on to future generations, which is what it's all about. I think most would agree that it's been fantastic for young people, particularly. There is a kind of inherent attraction of two animations by young kids anyway, but I think it would be just the, the preserving and conserving of stories and narratives and getting them out to a wider audience. To have that partnership with Monash University to help us with the animation, it's a great opportunity for our language, our stories, our dreaming to get out there further than just broom. It's just going out to everyone. To be able to bring the stories of our Gujiga, the stories of the Gropa dreaming, the Brolga dreaming, uh, the Ngabaya dreaming, which is the spirit people's dreaming, uh, the crow and chicken hawk dreaming, to bring those stories alive on screen, in language, uh, in animation, uh, is is incredibly powerful and exciting. You know, it, it, our, our kids, when they see that, it just opens their eyes and their hearts. And when our old people see it, I mean, there's just tears. You know, there's tears of because they can see that this precious gift of being able to continue to tell the stories in a way that excites the younger generation means that those 40,000 year old stories are going to be okay. Eh, nyakara, bajiwa yiwa, nyamangaji jujuju, jimini minjingantara gurandu, nyomangaji kiawarawu. Hey! Jinabara nyangata war.